for prayer, and if you would, open up, um, open up the service in a prayer of thanksgiving as well. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we plead your blood, Lord Jesus Christ, and forever, Father, we are thankful for you, Lord. It's all because of you, Lord Jesus Christ, that we have this eternal breath, because it's your salvation that you give unto us. It's your peace, hallelujah, that you give unto us, Holy Spirit. And Father, as one body, you knew, Father God, that this prayer request would come to your altar. But above all, Father, we pray that we're obedient, that as one body and you were lifted up, Sister David, Father. And Father God, right now, by your blood, Lord Jesus Christ, we know nothing can come against your blood. Nothing can come against the truth, the way, the life. Hallelujah. Your name is Lord Jesus Christ, and you are the name above every name. So Heavenly Father, as we lift up your beloved daughter, Father, each one of us, we all have prayers right now. We just praise God, Father God. We just bundle that all together. Tie a nice bow on it. And Father God, right now, as one body, we just say, thank you, Jesus. Your word says that with prayer and supplication, to be reminded to wrap it up in thanksgiving, Father. And so, Father, we know that when we're thankful, hallelujah, your answers to our prayer is yes and amen. So be it. I did it. Hallelujah. So, Father God, thank you for going before her. Thank you, Father God, for extinguishing the fiery darts of the enemy. All these distractions. Father God, we just thank you so much. And it's in Jesus Christ, holy in my name, and all God's beloved said, Amen. amen. Hallelujah. God bless you guys. Praise God. Oh, y'all look so fantastic. So, so nice. Praise God. Look, Mom, Deb's here. Church starts at 6.30. Praise God. Yeah. She said, I know. Hallelujah. So great. Especially after what you've been through today. Mom, Deb was a pincushion today. Yeah, they're like, oh, you high on something, right? You're like, no, I got Jesus. Amen. Mom, Deb had a, I, I, I mean, all I could text her was that, praise God, the, the nurse, she was able to see the blood of Jesus. Because this nurse apparently was training and um, stuck mom like in every area. And she had blood shooting all. Yeah, she'll tell you everything. Amen. <laughs> It's good to laugh. Huh? Brother Jim and Sister Carrie here, give God praise. Amen. <laughs> praise God. So good to see you back, Brother Jim. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's fresh fire. You know? Amen. There's a fire. There's a fire. Hallelujah. <laughs> Come on, Sister Dina. Come on, Sister Dina. There's a fire. So the question is am I a stumbling block or a stepping stone for a God? -like? Am I a stumbling block or a stepping stone for a godly? Over here on the screen, you just got a bunch of names listed. Amen. Listen, I just, I just started typing, don't be crunchy if you don't see your name there. And God is so good because look, my name is here, okay? So, so, so all together now, you just speak your name in the name of Jesus. One, two, three. Joey Craig. Amen. So your name is up there, okay? But this is what I wanted to show you as a stepping stone for a godly. Let me explain. This is Open Arms Community Church. Amen. You are a rock for Christ our Lord. Amen. You are built on the foundation who is the one and only rock. Amen. You have the revelation of who Lord Jesus Christ is. He is the Messiah, the only perfect son of God, the perfect sacrifice of God. Amen. Amen. You serve Lord Jesus Christ, the one and only Messiah, the perfect sacrifice of God who took all your sins and bore it on his body. Amen. Amen. You serve Lord Jesus Christ and His Spirit is alive in you. Amen. This is being a stepping stone for agape. Meaning, when I say that this is Open Arms Community Church on the screen, you never know these souls right now, where they're headed, which way they're going. But what Christ has charged us to do is to be the stepping stone to push the gospel of Lord Jesus Christ forward. Amen? Not to be a stumbling block to a, a fellow brother or sister and tell them, oh, it's okay not to go to church. Oh, it's okay not to fellowship with you. Oh, it's okay not to... It's a, no, that's not okay. Can I get an amen? That's not okay. That, that right there is being a stumbling block. And Lord Jesus Christ, yes, in the natural and the physical, when He was, when he was playing with all those kids, and he said, don't you harm one of them. You're better off tying a cinder block around your neck and chucking yourself in Harrington Lake. That's the J Joey version of the Bible. 
All right, don't hold me to it, <laughs> okay? But the same thing goes for someone who is spiritually young in the Lord, that is on fire and, uh, and zealous for the Lord. Right, Pastor? You ever see those, you ever see new couples? It does, now listen to me, family. It doesn't matter how old they are. What I'm talking about is a soul that, oh my goodness, I've never experienced God this way. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh my goodness, Lord Jesus, you are good. You never judged me, you saved me. Oh my goodness, Holy Spirit, you weren't, you weren't this Casper the friendly ghost. You weren't from back then and you don't, you exist now and you're in me. And see, it's these Christians right now, brothers and sisters that I'm talking about, that in their new walk with God, like a baby walking, see a baby when it walks, a baby doesn't just get up, walk and go, hey, how you doing? <laughs> right? Oh, maybe you did? When you started walking, that's like, all right, help me out a little bit then, okay? When a baby starts to walk, right, a baby goes, right? Now listen to me. Spiritually speaking, we do the same thing. Spiritually speaking, I don't care if you're if you're 13 or, or 82. Spiritually speaking, you have this fresh revelation of who Agape is. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And now you start walking spiritually, but you're walking like this. And what God has charged us to do is to be a stepping stone. Not a stumbling block, but a stepping stone. And we're going to get further and more into this in Jesus' name. Amen. You guys ready? Amen. Praise God. Let's say amen. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. So be it. Hallelujah. We're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 31 to 33. First thing first, if you notice, it's hard to see on the screen. I apologize. But in Corinthians, what's in green, it says Corinth. Say it with me, Corinth. So the first things first, before we get started in this worship service, that's all we're going to go through in the scripture. I'm not going to throw a bunch of scriptures at you. Hallelujah, right? We're, just, we're going to just be obedient as far as what the Holy Spirit has for us tonight. When we talk about 1 Corinthians 10.33, Holy Spirit said, Stop right there, don't get into the scripture, and give my church a charge. And I said, okay, we're going to charge the church. Hallelujah. How many of you ever had a, 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 a phone that's dying? Do you just look at it and go, oh my gosh, look what's happening to my phone. I spent $1,200 on this thing. Look at it. Kathy, look at it. The light's blinking. It's blinking and it's not acting right. I press the button and it's not doing nothing. It'd be kind of silly, right? You would say, charge it. Right? Charge, say with me, charge it. Now, I'm not telling you run up bills. No, rebuke that. That's the devil, okay? I'm not telling you go run up bills. Oh, Pastor Joyce said just buy it. No! Stop yourself, right? I'm saying charge yourself, hallelujah, with Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. How many of you had a long week already? <laughs> Beloved church family, please, for those of you in the front, look around. Even our pastor is being transparent and honest. I got both hands, so I'm just telling you right now. Every one of us, except Brother Donnie, Brother Donnie here tonight, you preach. You pre obviously, obviously you're doing something right, because I'm not, uh, you're the only one that ain't got no issues. Just me. I think I said, no, he got me. Never mind, give me the mic back. It's so good to laugh, amen? Say it with me, go to church. Quickly now, the Holy Spirit wants to teach us. He's the only teacher, amen? Say with the Holy Spirit, teach me. Holy Spirit, teach me. That's what we're doing. We're exercising the spirit of faith. We don't look at whoever's standing here speaking. We look unto Lord Jesus Christ, amen? amen. We're, all fall, we're all fallen children, but glory to God, the perfect one saved us. Hallelujah. Amen. Go to church. Hallelujah. Go to church. Now, I've experienced this already this week too many times that I'm praying in Jesus' name. The Holy Spirit cuts this head off. Amen? This distraction in my life. So many people, brother, might think that going to church is not a priority. Well, I know Jesus. Jesus loves me. And I don't have to go into the building. Preach! Come on, many of you are like, wait a minute, do you, you know my family member? Right? And I'm, I'm going to tell you right now how you bless that family member. We don't judge nobody, remember, because that darkness trying to come in, right? 
But God said you could judge the fruit. And that fruit shows that they're not, hear my heart now, that they're not serious with the God man, that they're playing games right now. So when God shows you that fruit, immediately how you rebuke that fruit and you speak blessings over their life is, Satan knows Jesus too. Every devil knows Jesus too. And guess what? You think those devils are welcome to church? They stay away from it. Devils don't want nothing to do with this. Demons don't want nothing to do with the fellowship of God's people. You know why? Because the Spirit of the Lord is here. And where the Spirit is, there is freedom. Amen? Hallelujah. Stand up on your feet. Don't get lazy on me. Stand up on your feet. Say it with me. Where the Spirit is, there is freedom. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus Christ give you that freedom from heaven and is with you in every breath of your very beloved being. Can I get an amen? Oh, hallelujah. Give God praise. Amen. Next way to rebuke that, other than telling that beloved one, listen, I hear what you're saying, but you got to understand. I know you know Jesus, but even Satan knows Jesus. The, de the devils, the demons, they all know Jesus. And they don't want anything to do with giving Lord Jesus praise. They don't. What they want to do, what their job is, they have a job. They have a job from Satan, from, from Satan himself, to distract all children of God, to not worship the only one worthy. His name is Lord Jesus Christ. See, when you get some of that out, because there's going to be a lot that is not going to let you speak. And guess what? Praise God. They walk out of you, just finish your sentence anyway. You know why? When you speak the word, it doesn't come back empty. So you just keep on speaking the word. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. It doesn't matter if they walk away. It doesn't matter if they interrupt you. It doesn't matter if they cuss you out. It doesn't. Because guess what? It's not that soul. It's the demon itself trying to interfere with God's glory. Say with me, no more. No. Hallelujah, brother. William. No more. Amen. So, second. Holy Spirit said, move on. Second. Lord Jesus Christ came. And when he started his beloved ministry of reconciliation, the ministry of reconciliation is what Lord Jesus Christ launched out in. Grabbing every soul and letting them know that there's a father that loves them. Yeah. And even as he was trying to grab, he grabbed his disciples. And even his disciples bought into it, Brother Simeon. But at the same time, they were still struggling with the fact of, okay, you said, Father is in you, you're in the Father. You love me, but now you say you're leaving. Why? If you love me, you won't leave me, right? And the glory of our God is, it's because I love you, I have to leave. Because when Holy Spirit comes, He will never leave you for all of eternity. Hallelujah! <laughs> hallelujah! Oh, hallelujah! Glory to God! We're never alone! You're never alone, beloved church family. You're never alone, amen? Thank you, Lord. And so the next point is that Holy Spirit wants to address quickly is Lord Jesus Christ, you notice, didn't come into the New Testament, into the New Covenant, and then all of a sudden, after Malachi, the New Testament, New Covenant isn't Book of Jesus, chapter 1. And you didn't have Lord Jesus Christ rewriting the whole Bible. His disciples wrote the gospel. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, right? Then it gets into Acts, correct? But you notice that even though he was God in the flesh and had every right to rewrite everything, he chose not to. He chose for Holy Spirit to write through those that he discipled. Thank you, amen. And praise God, I thought that was thunder. I was like, we're going to get out of here right now. I was getting ready to go. Praise God. Hallelujah. I was like, I was like oh, the sky's going to open. <laughs> oh my goodness. I love goofy moments. Like, I'm just like, <laughs> say with you, be ready. Be ready. Hallelujah. So, so Lord Jesus Christ doesn't have a book in the Bible that says book of Jesus. Now I know for those of you who are religious, some of you just said in your mind, well, the whole book is. Book. You're right. But don't get crunchy about it. Listen to what I'm telling you right now. 
Because it's that kind of mentality that wants to block you from a blessing. Don't get religious with God. God wrote the Holy Bible from front to back. Amen? Amen. But what we're saying is, Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh didn't sit there and write the Bible and said, this is the way you're going to be from now on. What he did is he fellowship with disciples. And they worship God together, and it's in this anointing, in this fellowship, in this relationship, in this exchange, that these disciples got to understand, witness, and testify who God truly is. Amen? Hallelujah. Oh, it just gets gooder and gooder. Amen? It just gets gooder and gooder. Check this out. So, you have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and they all testify. They're all writing. This is the gospel now. Amen? Say it with me. Gospel. Gospel means good news. Hallelujah. Good news looks like this, Brother David. Amen? If you claim to be religious, then your face should be like this. If you claim to be religious, you Christian, hallelujah, you should be like this. If you're not like this, something wrong. Something wrong. Call you Mr. and Mrs. Wong. Right? If you're if you like if you're like this, I'm not poking fun at anybody, but I'm saying, what is man, what is manifesting in you to make your outward appearance look like you? Are you I was never happy and look like this. Don't get me wrong, today I stood in front of the dishes and I looked like that. Oh Pastor, pray for me. Hey, Pastor John, pray for me. I found out today I'm an expert soaker. <laughs> I like to soak dishes. And I think that I did a good job, right, Brother John? I think I did a good job. I'm like, I put enough soap in that. I'm like, and I walk away. <laughs> pray for me. I'm not perfect. And then later on, I hear, I hear Holy Spirit say, my beloved daughter is doing the dishes that you should have done if you're doing everything unto me. And I know your heart, praise God. She just said it. I don't know if you heard it. She said, it's my pleasure. But listen, when agape speaks, and I said it from the pulpit, now I know I'm not going to be an expert soaker. I'm going to be an expert dishwasher. Amen. I'm going to get, get the job done. Right? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, then we get into Acts. And then praise God, this brother named Saul of Tarsus has an encounter with our risen Savior. Amen. Now let me ask you something. Have you ever asked God, okay, so Lord Jesus, He didn't rewrite the New Testament New Covenant. He just came to do your will, Father. What was His will? To come? Repent. Show us how to repent. Lord Jesus Christ came from heaven to show us what salvation truly is. It's His salvation. Which you, wait, listen, family, listen. We're going to rebuke the devil once and for all. There's so much confusion, we're going to rebuke him right now once and for all. If you say Jesus Christ is who he is, the same thing Lord Jesus Christ has, you have right now as you sit there. Yeah. Hallelujah! <laughs> there's no variance, there's no, there's, no, there's no degree of it. Everything that Lord Jesus Christ has, he freely give to you. And for those of you who rejoice, I can tell. You have it. I have it. No one can take it away from you. Amen? So after the Gospels, now we have the New Covenant. Amen? This New Covenant. Now let me ask you something. In the New Covenant, did all the disciples write those books of the New Covenant? The answer is no. Who did God primarily use to write 13 books? The Apostle Paul. So may I ask you, how long did the Apostle Paul walk with Lord Jesus Christ with the rest of the disciples? Uh, hallelujah. Can I get an amen? amen. Wait, you're, so you're telling me that all those books that were written, including this book that we got right now, written to the church, is written by a beloved son of God that didn't even walk with the rest of the disciples? 
So let me ask you something. What gives him the authority to write the word of God with the authority? Pastor? Holy Spirit. Amen. Where is Holy Spirit right now? Hallelujah. Many of you said right here. Amen. Now let me ask you. Is it the same Holy Spirit? That, okay. Hallelujah. Don't, don't get physical now. Okay. I'm, I love you. I'm, I'm, my goodness. Now. Here's the Apostle Paul. Once was so religious, right? So religious that he stood alongside when they stoned Stephen, right? With such authority, the Word of God says, with such authority, the Holy Spirit showing me that he stood there, watched him be stoned to death. But check this out. They had such reverence and respect for him, they would lay down their coats in front of, of Saul. He wasn't Paul back then, Saul. And it was, it, 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 it was back then there's so many different kind of traditions, so many ways to show, right? The sackcloth. I mean, we don't want to get into that right now. But they, they showed their respect and reverence for him. And isn't it amazing that he watched Stephen forgive them? And I know that what Stephen did planted the seed in Saul. And everyone knows. I confess to you, I would have been one of those that threw it. Jesus. And it's for this beloved Son of God to say, forgive them. Can you imagine? See, sometimes I think that the Bible, the way we interpret it or the way we preach it, is a little bit too PG rated. Let's get into the R rated tonight. Can we do that? Can you imagine rocks being thrown and you see a soul bleeding? And they would take rocks and bash the person's head in. So could you imagine just blood coming from his head? Maybe you could see some of his brains. I don't even know how we're going to move forward. Hallelujah. The point is, is that the Apostle Paul wrote the New Covenant. In the fashion that Holy Spirit wanted. It was breathed by Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit wrote it through him. But you notice. That even as Paul wrote this. He didn't write. With no conviction. He wrote it from his own personal conviction. In his relationship with the Lord. And he also addressed it. To the church. Say when you go to church. Go to church. We didn't even get started tonight, so pray for me because we got a lot to cover. Amen? Amen. If you don't believe me how important it is to go to church, why then would the Apostle Paul write to the churches? Amen. But yet you say you're a Christian and you don't want to come to church. There's something wrong, family. Is it just me? Pastor, I know you and I are one. I mean, is it right? What has happened to us? Where you can tell me that it's not important when you look at the Bible and you see, here, I show you, Rome, that's the book of Romans, Ephesus, that's the book of Ephesians, Galatia, that's the book of Galatians, Colossae, that's the book of Colossians, Philippi, that's the book of Philippians. What are those churches? But yet, how could we read these books and go, oh, okay, that's a good word, Lord, I got you, Holy Spirit, but I don't need to go to church. Living in the world, Pastor. Amen. Too much fun. Amen. Maybe fear. Lazy. Good word. Stru oh. Too much idle time. Too much eye time. Good word, Sister Rocky. Sister Rocky, oh my God, Holy Spirit preached such a powerful word through our prayer that you guys start coming on Friday nights. But that's between you and the Lord. Amen. But we're going to keep on fellowshiping. We're going to keep on doing it. Because guess what? Even if it's just me. And guess what? God helped me to that. Doing during the whole pandemic and all this stuff, it was lonely being here. But guess what? I'm never alone. Amen. Amen. Right, Pastor? We were never alone. Amen? So let's get into it. Say when we get into fellowship. So the question is, what am I doing for agape? Am I intimate with agape? What am I doing for agape? Am I intimate 
with agape. <sighs> Say it with me, be ready. Be ready. Holy Spirit's going to lay down, usher, floodgates open of conviction over all of our hearts. Amen. Pastor says it all the time. He, de he deals with us first because in the fear of only God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, agape! In the fear of only God, he deals with whoever's bringing the message. He will. What am I doing for agape? Am I intimate with agape? You know what I love about this word intimate? You can see the picture here. Thank you. Be happy about it. Thanks. <laughs> don't, don't be cringy about it. Being intimate, right? You could have like this picture here just hugging one another, right? This next one, right? Oh, this one. I like this one. I like this one. Right? That's kind of being intimate, right? Earlier today, she didn't look at me like that. She was like, you gonna soak the, you gonna soak the dishes? Really? What about this next one? Oh, I love this one. You, don't you love new couples? Don't you love new couples where you see them in Walmart and you're like, you can't get around them with your cart and they're just walking around just so in love? And, right? It's like, come on already, right? You can let go of each other's hands. Right? What's this next one? Oh, kiss on the cheek. Amen. Kiss on the cheek. Give her a break, man. Give, give, give God praise to her. Give her a round of applause, man. Intimate. Say the word with me. Intimate. Of course, there's other things that, that show intimacy. And God wants us to become intimate with Him. But God wanted to display these, these, these really uplifting pictures and this display right here that you see, glory to God, of intimacy, right? But there could be many other ways, you know, a gift or whatever. But God wanted to expose this one thing that we don't realize that we're being intimate with. Isn't it incredible that this is property of Lord Jesus Christ? Right, Sister Titania? I am a child of God. This is His holy temple. Holy Spirit lives in me. Holy Spirit lives in me. Right, Sister Cassie? Holy Spirit lives in me. And now we know this word intimate, and we think intimacy as far as like relationships, right? But intimacy has a lot to do with food. If you truly examine as far as being intimate with food, food calls out to you. Food has a voice. Tacos. Tacos. Come on, Brother Greg. Holy Spirit, just tell me what you're thinking about. <laughs> Ta tacos. Rock and always start crazy tacos. Crunchy tacos, all tacos. Red sauce. Cheese sauce. All cheese sauce. Right? But then not only will you think about that food when it calls, most likely without even any thought behind it, once you get it, it's now going in. It's intimacy going in. Maybe you grab a soda. I'm not judging. Am I judging anybody right now? No. So if God's convicting you, take it up with the Lord, don't get crunchy at me. Amen? This is how you break through in a relationship with God and get a fresh anointing. Amen? I'm just going to preach the truth. Amen? And sometimes, grab a soda. Praise God. Just sip on that soda. All the way down to where there's nothing. You're just shaking. And, right? No thought. Because I'm thirsty. But the question is, is where are we in our consciousness in what we're allowing to come into the temple of God? And this is what leads us into our scripture. Whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, say with me, whatever I do. Do it all for the glory of God. Oh, we're going to go extreme now. Amen. We're going to go extreme because we're a new covenant church covered by his holy blood. Listen, we are covered by his blood. Amen. You truly know Lord Jesus Christ. He lives in you. Amen. Amen. Which means there shouldn't be any outward, right, Brother Logan? There shouldn't be any outward influence. Because God is in you. His light shines. So no matter how dark the world gets. Are you watching me now, family? No matter how dark the world gets, he is in you, the light shines outward, so it not only exposes, but it pushes evil far away, right? Amen? It pushes evil. 
Hallelujah. Right? You drive it, you drive at night, you don't got your lights on. Duh. Right? I pray that your beloved, I, I know Holy Spirit is like, turn on your lights. You turn on the light. Oh, right? The same is the same way is spiritually speaking. God is saying, whatever you do, whatever you eat. See, right now, God is asking us, will we change the way we eat? Well, Brother Joe, you tell me you're going to diet? No, you're not listening. God is saying, change the way you eat as far as your thoughts are just eating and going to a restaurant, ordering your food, whatever. Because in Matthew 5, the Beatitudes, right? God says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. For they will be fed. Verse 6, right? Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. So this gives you an opportunity that when food calls on you, tacos, 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 you don't heed to the voice of food, you capture that voice and you say, I crucify this thought. You're going to be put down in your place. And Lord Jesus Christ, I am hungry. And I want to know, Lord, what would you like to do? Because I'm not going to allow the devil of the air to have any dictation Amen. over my life. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to go based on craving. Right? I'm not going to go based on cravings. Can I get an amen? Amen. And, and see, that's, that's changing the way we eat. Change the way you drink. What do you mean, Joey? You don't want me drinking soda? You drink all the soda you want. That's between you and the Lord. But what I'm saying is, ask God. The Word of God says here, whatever you do, God is saying, whatever you do. Well, Brother Joey, what about if I like smoking? You smoke, that's what you do. Do it for the Lord. Oh, is this guy crazy? How in the world is this preacher preaching this? You like doing drugs? Do it for the Lord. You like looking at pornography? Do it for the Lord. Because I guarantee you, once you include the Lord in what you're doing that is not right, God will rebuke you in Jesus' name. And then, oh, come on now. Oh, come on now, family. Say it with me. Do it for the Lord. Because I guarantee you, Holy Spirit will not allow that thing that you say you're doing for the Lord to remain any longer. But you know what the devil's hoping? Oh, please listen. You know what the devil's hoping? It's for you to do that thing in secret. Let me just smoke this real quick. Come on now, I used to smoke. I, 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 I smoked for 20 years, so you can't play games with me. Hey, how you guys doing? You guys doing all right? Listen, we can cover up all our junk, but God knows everything. I'm just a brother who loves you. I'm your pastor. I'm your friend. I'm your... I don't want to be your friend. I want to be your brother. God just going to be the truth. Amen? But please, in the name of Jesus, will you let God in in whatever you do? If you love just sitting there watching TV, do it for the Lord. Amen. Have you all ever heard the word preach like this? Glory to God. I'm trying to keep up, Pastor. Pray. We're one. Amen. I know you hold me accountable. That's why I forgive me. I keep looking at you. <laughs> I keep looking at Pastor because I'm like, man, I don't ever want to make a hard left. Amen. I rebuke you, but we're human, right? God is saying, do it all for the glory of God. And this picture comes up because who's the perfect one? Say his name. Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So what do you eat or drink and what are your hobbies? I love this. If you have hobbies, do it for the Lord. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen. Oh, I, I, well, brother, I, I, I love doing I, I, I love doing crafts. All right, make crafts for the Lord. Well, I love writing poems. Okay, write poems for the Lord. Oh, I love playing video games. Play video games for the Lord. There's people older than me just 
addicted to video games. Hours and hours and hours on it. They don't even have a, a good hair do anymore because the control, the microphone is all messed up their hair. <laughs> Praise God. I, I mean, I, I don't know what to say. I'm not judging them, but I'm just saying, listen, if that's what you love to do, do it for the Lord. How do I do it for the Lord? Start, start saying scripture over that little microphone. Right? Do it for the Lord. Amen? Say with me, do it for the Lord. Whatever your hobbies are, will you allow God to be God of that hobby? It's not your hobby. See, the key to living an abundant life is allowing God's presence to live through you, Sister Virginia. But if your hobby is gardening, and God is saying, why can't I garden with you? If your hobby is fishing, right? Don't get religious with God. I hear a lot of people say, well, I love going fishing because out there in the water, I just feel God's presence. I get this a lot, Pastor. And I wait for them to open their eyes and I look at them going, His presence is right here. Amen. You don't have to go somewhere to, to be in His presence. He lives in you. But the question is, is whatever hobbies you're, you're having, whatever you're doing, I don't know what you're doing, God, go for it. I don't. I don't care to know. I don't want to know. This is between you and God. Is God the, is God, the God of your life? Yes. Amen. I hear life say yes. So the question is, what are you doing? Do not cause anyone to stumble, whether Jews, Greeks, or the church of God. Do not cause anyone to stumble. Meaning, listen, every day, every day, I can't count how many times a day, my beloved wife will tell you, I'm speaking out thanksgiving and prayers for God's holy people. Every, every moment, every day. And the reason why is not because I want to act holy and righteous and mighty. No, rebuke that. It's because my Lord Jesus Christ is worthy. Amen. 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 Brother Sidney, I know what he did so that I am able through the power of his resurrection, Holy Spirit, to speak thanksgiving, to speak glory, to speak blessings, to speak breakthrough, to speak healing, to speak miracles, to speak it. Amen? But when, when, when I choose to judge somebody or grumble or complain, when I choose to compare my life and my relationship with God with Rockies, with David's, with Rosie's, right, with Connie, if I choose to start comparing what I do, God has nothing to do with that. Beloved church family, God's trying to give you a warning because there's many of you right now in this room that does that. Don't act holy. If you're too busy looking at what other people are doing or why this person didn't do this for me or why this person didn't God's not in that. And darkness right now is trying to come in your heart. Rebuke it in Jesus' name. Can you hear an amen? amen? God is the only one that deserves our full attention. All of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. The moment that we start looking at somebody else, our eyes are already off of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Say it with me. Do not cause anyone to stumble. May I say something to you? I'm going to confess this real quick. I'll just use your mask. I don't know why. Well, that's a little moist. It's <laughs> a little moist. Huh? That's annoying me. Wearing this, I have never caused anyone to stumble just keeping this on. But you know what's real sad to me? I was just in this worship service. A lot of brothers and sisters of ours judge people who wear it. They judge people who wear a mask. You see, my point is, you don't know where people are at with the Lord. So as a pastor, if I'm going to 
demonstrate or display God's grace and mercy, I'm going to wear a mask because I don't want somebody to stumble or fall. But if you're going to judge me for wearing a mask, I feel for you. Because right there in that judgment, you allow darkness to come in. Why can't we just let people worship God and just be blessed? Why can't we? Oh, I hear it all the time. You're a pastor and you wear a mask? Yes. And you don't? Well, no, I don't have to. That's right, you don't have to, but don't cause anybody to stumble or fall. You know how hard it is when the first time I showed up at somebody's house for a visitation, I didn't have a mask on, they went like this. You know what kind of conviction I felt as a child of God? That right there at that moment, I allowed fear to hurt them? Yes, I believe just like every one of you. Here real soon, we won't have to wear masks anymore. Amen. And praise God. It's so funny because I don't like wearing them. Amen. But guess what? I do it because I don't want anyone to stumble. What are you doing in your life that's causing somebody to stumble? I don't wear them. And praise God, you have peace about it? And that's what you should do. Do you judge people that wear masks? But see, but, but see, the problem is, the problem there is, is that that's right, amen. Because we don't judge them, but we just pray for them. Hallelujah. And I have not been sick because God is helping me. Hallelujah. God covers me, amen. So, anybody else? Are you doing something in your life that's causing people to stumble? Not speaking the word when I need to. Not speaking the word when you need to, and you say need to when you know God is telling you to say the word. Amen. How many of us missed opportunities like that? Show hands. So look around, beloved city. Look around. This is your church family now. Every hand went up. Amen. So right there. Shake it off. Shake it off. <laughs> Can you hear an amen? We had premarital premar counseling the other day. And Sister, Sister Tatiana said that. I'm like, oh, that's so good. <laughs> All right, cool. Let's move on. Hallelujah. We're going to look as far as who did it cause anyone to stumble. He is the only perfect and righteous one, and did he cause anyone to stumble? No, no. Amen. Even as I try to please everyone in every way, for I am not seeking my own good, but the good of many. There's only one good. There's only one good. Amen. Amen. Say with me, I got that. Who's the God thing? That's the only one good. That's what the Bible says. There's only one good. There's only one God. Hallelujah. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. And I love this because when you look at this, it just shows you as far as the magnitude of that goodness. The magnitude of that goodness. Hallelujah. The resurrection power of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So what am I doing? And am I intimate with the God thing? What am I doing? Am I intimate with the God thing? I want to show you something real quick. Holy Spirit said, show this, so I'm just so thankful. I got the picture, and I wanted to show you this real quick. Look at this. I made a little baseball card for Brother Blake Russell. I don't know if you know this, but Brother Blake Russell, he's really gifted in sports, in every sport. But he has a passion. He has a passion for baseball. I want to say it's a deeper passion. It's, a, it's more of a calling. But I want to show you something in this young kid. I want to show you something. When you do a close-up to his face, there's some of you that can't see it. But I'm going to show you. I'm going to highlight it. He puts a cross. Can I get an amen? He, he puts a cross. On both, he puts a cross right there. Now I'm going to tell you as a beloved youth, as a beloved son of God, being this age, I... Oh, Pastor, I wish that I was this close with God. Amen. That even though he has this hobby, this talent, this gift, this passion, he puts the cross on his face, and this is just between him and the Lord. Amen. And could you imagine the magnitude of his friends and even the people that he's playing up against when they look at his face and they can see the cross? I believe strongly that pictures like this and what Brother Blake is doing 
can really minister to a lot of us older folks, right? I'm just a few years older than them. I mean, maybe you older folks, right? What am I doing, amen? The gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, we know is agape. Here is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This is the scripture that we just went through tonight. This is the scripture that we just went through tonight, and it's just showing you the gospel of Lord Jesus Christ. For line by line by line, it's showing you. But you notice what Holy Spirit did. Not only is it showing you Jesus, not only is it showing you the only one good, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, but it's also showing you the magnitude of the power that we have through agape within each and every one of us. I'm going to read it again. Whatever you eat or drink, whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Is that not what Lord Jesus Christ did? Amen. Amen. Is that not what you're doing with your life? Mm. If you're not family right now, today's the day. If you need prayer, pastor, the, the leadership's going to be up here. Let us pray for you. But if there's something going on in your life that's not giving God glory, let's fix it. Because we don't have to live that way any longer. Amen? Next, next. Do not cause anyone to stumble, whether Jews, Greeks, or the church of God. Look at God's sacrifice. Did God send the Savior to just show us that you guys are worthless, good for nothing, know it all? Prideful? Stupid? No. When he looked at you, he didn't even look at you. He looked at you and he saw God. How did he see God, Pastor? He saw God's children. And he saw the level of darkness that's in each child that was deceived and manipulated by religion and by worthless works. And so here God is showing us, don't cause anyone to stumble. How do you not cause anyone to stumble? Tell me, Pastor Joey, crucify yourself. You could be right a hundred times, but guess what? You could also be wrong a hundred times if you choose not to crucify yourself. Everybody can claim that they're a child of God. But the truth of the matter is, when the testing comes, do you do what Lord Jesus does? And you say, no matter what it is, I'm not going to stand up for myself. I want to pray for you. I'm sorry that I hurt you. Have you ever said sorry and you did nothing wrong? But can I tell you, it may not feel good at that moment, but you bless Holy Spirit. Father, the way, you bless Holy Spirit. Now check this out. When you bless Holy Spirit, even as I try to please everyone in every way, for I'm not seeking my own good, but the good of many. There's only one good, right? Who's that only one good? Hallelujah. So when you crucify yourself, you're just showing God, Father, I trust in you. Father God, it's not my strength, not my power, not my wisdom. It's you. And this resurrection power God promises will manifest within you. Does this mean that you start feeling good right away? No. The next day, maybe not. But just because you don't feel good that moment or the next day, you don't shut this up. You just keep thanking God. This is where a lot of people are missing their blessing. Oh, I didn't feel anything right away, Pastor. Oh, it's been a couple days. I still don't have anything, Pastor. Even while you got diarrhea of the mouth. You're just speaking negativity. You're just chasing after the blessing. God is saying, stop chasing after the blessing and be thankful for what I've already done through Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. We gotta snap out of it, brother Tom. We gotta snap out of it. I can shake you till you're blue in the face, but it's up to you to snap out of it. I can. I can scream, I can sweat, all the sweat that I can possibly sweat. But it's up to you to snap out of it. Same way, it's up to me. Okay. See, God right now is knocking on the door of your heart. Are you ready to get uncomfortable with God? Or do you just want to sit there and just be your... I'm not judging you. But sister, say, God wants the best for you, amen? 
Listen how the, listen how the, the scripture finalizes. So that they may be saved. Can everybody stand up on their feet when we're closed now? We've got a couple of so. Everything that Holy Spirit taught us tonight and everything that has transpired on the screens and what was said and what was demonstrated, it's all for the glory, of course, as you know, for the one man, the only one that deserves all of it is Lord Jesus Christ. But what Father God did in return in this worship when we lift up the name of Lord Jesus Christ and demonstrate His power is the presence of Holy Spirit flows mightily. I boldly declare over my life, over my house, over my beloved church, Open Arms Community Church, this is where God planted me, and this is where I'm rooted. And you know me by the fruits that I bear from my life. It's not a speech, it's not a song. If you know me, you know the fruits of my life. And the fruits that I display are not my own fruits. The fruits of my life, what I display is the fruits of my Lord Jesus Christ. And it only comes through Holy Spirit. I say all of this to you right now because if you're one of these souls that's listening, that's planted here, rooted here, if you're one of the souls that's on Facebook struggling right now, God has already given you clear instruction and direction tonight on how to rebuke this enemy and how to live a life of abundance and how to overcome every distraction. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. But the question that Holy Spirit has for each one of us it's now that the service is concluded and we're going to play music and we're going to walk out of it. What are we going to do with it? I pray in Jesus' name that you are a stepping stone for all of the world. That when they see you, they're just like so in awe of God's glory. They're so in awe of looking in your eyes and they see the love of Christ. They're so in awe of you being inviting and loving and welcoming. That they want what you have. But maybe you're one of those that, man, Brother Joey, I got judgmental. I started looking at what other people are doing. I started getting crunchy. Will you get right with the Lord tonight? I'm going to ask all leadership to come up front. Praise God. All of leadership. Beloved church family, pray for them. The Holy Spirit charged them to come to the altar right now because God is going to bless them in their roles, hallelujah, in leadership. To so get ready to pray for you if you would want prayer. I pray every soul in here ask somebody to pray. Will you give it to God tonight? Or are we going to keep playing games? I pray that we don't. So in Jesus' name, there's so many right now that are praying right now. When this song come, comes on, even if you don't want to come up to this altar, will you just come up front, lift your hands, and pray for the ones that are at the altar? Let's just be obedient. Amen.